Okay, I'm going to take just an extra second to set up this clip than what I've done for some of the others, primarily because it drives me batty. From the summer of 1989, here is At the Movies with Rex Reed and Dixie Watley reviewing Ghostbusters 2. I have a real personal problem with journalists who don't double check their facts. And here we have, uh, they ought to have had to print a retraction for this. Listen, Dixie says that Bill Murray calls Oscar Yuppie Larpa. You and I both know that that's what Dan Ackward refers to the kids at the birthday party as. And then Rex Reed says that the Statue of Liberty is left at the museum. Clearly they tied up that loose end in the movie. You see them going out to the island at the very end in the little montage there, and you see the restored Statue of Liberty in that sweeping helicopter shot. Did he leave early? Uh, did, was he sent an incomplete copy for review? I can attest to the fact, because when I saw Ghostbusters 2 on opening day, I saw it twice, back to back. 12 o'clock matinee, 2 o'clock matinee. Then I came home, and in my mailbox was this copy of the shooting script. And this was a gift from James Van Heist that was uh, adapting the, the, uh, the story into comic book form, starring the real Ghostbusters for Now Comics. And I know that there's a deleted scene. Matter of fact, they actually drew those pages uh, for the comic book, and I have proof art of those too. Here you go. And these clearly show the main characters at the restoration scene for the Statue of Liberty. Uh, and they all had dialogue and stuff to say about when their ancestors came over and saw the Statue of Liberty. But when it was cut from the movie, then they made them cut it from the comic book too. So, no. The filmmakers did not drop the ball and forget to take the Statue of Liberty back to the island. Rex Reed dropped the ball at some point. Now, I can cut the guy a little bit of slack primarily because he was in the movie Superman, uh, but also because there is the possibility, as I have long believed, that the movie I saw twice on opening day and came immediately home and compared to the shooting script was slightly different in a couple of places from the version I later saw on cable. So in my, in my belief, I don't have any way to prove it because I didn't own a video camera until 1992, so uh, in 1989 I would not have had one. Uh, I couldn't have snuck one in the theater if I wanted to. I wish somebody had thought that far ahead. And if you've got a bootleg copy of Ghostbusters 2 from the summer of 1989, please let me know. Yeah, there's the possibility that the reviewers saw a slightly different cut of the movie. If you'll notice, uh, Chris Conley made mention of the Kumbaya scene, even though that did not make it to the theatrical release. And although I haven't reviewed it here, I did recently watch on Spook Central the Oprah Winfrey episode, and she made mention of the Kumbaya scene. So, okay, I can kind of cut you a little bit of slack there, Rex, but... Rex, Dixie, come on, double check your facts, take better notes, ask them to pause the movie, I don't know, but, but you just make yourselves look bad when you make outrageous claims like this in, in the name of criticizing somebody else and you make your own errors? Hmm, don't like it. For what it's worth, at the movies with Rex Reed and Dixie Watley. That in the midst of summer sequel mania, Ghostbusters 2 did not materialize easily. This in spite of the spirited first Buster making almost a quarter of a billion dollars, the highest grossing comedy of all time. But after exercising some ill will and a bit of shifting in the driver's seat, Columbia Pictures has the Ghostbusters wagon back on the street five years later, both to save New York, again, and to give the studio a much needed hit. But this time, the talented ghost grabbing team of Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, and Ernie Hudson are upstaged. The real star is the slime. You're nothing but an unstable short chain molecule. You foul, obnoxious man! I'm a weak electrochemical bond. I have seen some disgusting crud in my time. But you take the case. You are, you're just. This is what you do with your spare time. Peter, this is an incredible breakthrough. I mean, what a discovery, a psychoreactive substance. Whatever this stuff is, it responds to human emotional states. Mood slime. Oh, baby. In a contrived plot twist, the slime's primary scene-stealing competition comes from Sigourney Weaver's yuppie larva, as Murray calls the baby. Well, what do you think? He's... Well, he's ugly. I mean, he's not elephant man ugly, but he's not attractive. Was his father ugly? Don't listen. And he stinks. You're right, senor. Did his father stink? Yeah. Daddy was a smelly, huh? What's your name? His name is Oscar. Oh, named after a hot dog, you poor man. Rick Moranis and Annie Potts are back, too, providing some amusing moments of horned-rimmed horniness while babysitting baby Oscar. 
Why don't you come over here and sit with me? Okay. So you want to play Boggle or Super Mario Brothers? You know, I think motherhood's a very natural instinct. I like a child myself. Would you? Uh, tonight? They have more important things to do, like making sure a river of slime doesn't take over Manhattan. Ghostbusters 2 is not a bust, but it does not slime the first one. The delight in the premise is diluted, of course, because the idea of Ghostbusters isn't a new and innovative one anymore. And I got the feeling that if things were moving just a little too slow, the simple solution was to slime everyone. I admire the effort at social comment by making the slime get violent, viscous, and vicious by feeding on New York nastiness, and I enjoyed the very creative slime-leading sorcerer who can out-nasty any New Yorker on his worst day. There were some charming apparitions. I especially liked the green ghosts, and the Titanic was wonderful, too. Ghost busting isn't nearly as satisfying the second time around, but it's still fun, and the kids love the slime. I could pass on the slime. Yeah, I, I could pass on this movie, actually. I, I didn't thing, like huh? it as much as you did. I think that uh, it introduces a lot of ideas that come off like old Saturday Night Live skits. They don't lead to anything, and there's no payoff. I don't like what they've done with Bill Murray. They've made him almost... Uh, a sap in this picture. What happened to his wonderful old cynicism? You know, he actually kind makes nice gooey guy. eyes at the baby in this. I didn't much dig baby, it. Rex. And I like the idea of introducing the Statue of Liberty to fight mm -hmm. off the bad vibes of the slime. But what happens to the Statue of Liberty? According to this movie, it's deserted too. It's still in <laughs> Midtown somewhere, waiting to get hauled away. They must have walked it. They walked it back at some point. That would just have made the movie much too long. I think it's a lot of dumb jokes that don't really work. And the and Peter McNichol as the Slavic museum person and Rick Moranis steal the funny. movie. Something wrong with the movie sort of where they Moranis steal the movie? Year, huh? They're the best people in it. They not the very, Ghostbusters. They were very, very funny. And the bad guy. He was great too. Well, next when Rick Rick Moranis is back again, he's referring to his children as the little ones. And he's not kidding. In Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Made a backyard adventure of all time. She loved it. She thinks you should take everyone to see it regardless of age. Three and a half stars from her. Ghostbusters 2, well, wasn't too ghostly for me. Mostly a bust. Only two stars from me. Dixie says it won't slime the original, but it's a good if goopy time. Just grab and trip on where Coca-Cola Classic is sold. We dare you to send it in. So become a Ghostbuster. See if we care. <laughs>